Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Movie Crusaders. My name is Sean Wasserkrug. Obviously, we're not in our normal little studio area. We're actually in my living room. It's about 3.15 in the morning, so I'm actually trying to do this review without waking everybody else up. So I'm doing this a little bit further away from my normal studio area. Uh, it's three, like I said, it's three fifteen in the morning. I just got done watching the uh, Peacock premiere of Halloween Kills. Um, Halloween. Uh, I've I've been watching the Halloween franchise pretty much since I was a little kid. Uh, been you know through all the iterations, whether it was the old school Michael Myers storylines to the rebooted Rob Zombie uh, franchise one, which really wasn't that good, to obviously now the reboot that pretty much retconned all the previous films past the original Halloween film. Um, when it comes to the 2018's Halloween, I was a little indifferent with that film. I thought it was decent, but had a lot of issues with it overall in terms of plot, story elements, and just the way they chose to do certain characters and dialogue and situations like that. Seeing the trailer for Halloween Kills, I was a little more confident with what we were going to get here. Obviously, the trailer um, looked a lot more fun, a lot more brutal, exciting. Um, there was elements in that trailer that I'm going to touch on here that really made me kind of excited to see this one. Plus, it popped up on Peacock, man. I didn't have to go see it in the in the theaters, which I've said this on my show with Brian and even on the reviews. I hate watching horror films in theaters with a crowd because those are the worst kind of crowds to watch uh, a movie with. Um, so I was glad that I was able to watch it here at home uh, instead of having to be out with the masses watching this uh, in front of them. Because I remember the last Halloween film I saw in 2018 literally uh, had a person behind me who had never seen a Halloween film talking through the entire film. So I got to watch this one at home. Uh and yeah, Halloween Kills. Um, I'm just going to get this out of the way. This is easily one of the most frustratingly stupid films that I've watched in 2021 so far. I, I wanted to like this. I really, really did. I was excited to watch this, even though I wasn't super crazy about the last film. This film is disjointed and sloppily done. Uh, it's, it's so frustrating how bad this film is. It, it, it makes my blood boil, which is why I'm doing the review now instead of waiting till tomorrow and doing it in the studio all, you know, with the great camera and all that kind of stuff. Cause I, I, I need to get this out. Um, this film, I'm going to go over a lot of the stuff. Uh, but yeah, this film was, I, I, I lost count how many times I did a frustrated sigh through this film because of just what I was watching. It just, this, this film, uh, let's just get into it. First off the, obviously the, the events of the last film, last time we saw everyone, uh, Lori, um, uh, Judy Greer, uh, who plays Karen, uh, you know, Lori's daughter and Allison, who's, you know, Karen's daughter, all trapped Michael in Lori's house in a fire and they're you know basically escaping, and you hear uh, the firefighters coming to the house that's on fire. That's where the last film ended. Would have been nice if the film would have started off with that, but no. We get 20 minutes of a flashback from the events of the very, very first Halloween back in the 1970s. That was like the events of how Michael got captured to a bunch of disjointed uh, scenes of characters uh, around Haddonfield that we haven't really met. Um, we do get to see uh, um, Allison's boyfriend from the first film uh, who had disappeared uh, in the last film, Cameron, uh, which was one of my problems with the first film. Uh, he just straight up disappeared. We never saw him again after the the party. We, we do see him again. He's basically walking home and he stumbles upon uh, Hawkins, uh, who was... Um, uh, Will Patton from the first film, um, who's still alive. Uh, he survives the knife wound that he uh, got from the first film. Um, but we're getting a bunch of disjointed scenes. We're getting a bunch of new characters that uh, we didn't know previously. And some characters that we knew of from a younger age, mainly uh, Anthony Michael Hall, who plays Tommy, who was the boy that Laurie babysitted during the events of the very, very first film. Um, basically they're all at a bar and they're basically kind of doing like a in memoriam of the events from 40 years earlier. Basically none of these scenes 
are necessarily important or, or very well acted in any way. I think they're just trying to establish other characters for the story. And the reason why is because the and to me the biggest crime of this film is that they pretty much saddle Jamie Lee Curtis's Lori to basically a hospital room for most of this film. If you're expecting another awesome epic showdown between Lori and Michael in this film, it's not going to happen. Lori, obviously, Lori got stabbed at the end of the first film, and she's having to recover. I get that. That makes total sense. But to completely saddle Jamie Lee Curtis to basically a hospital room for the whole events of this film, outside of like maybe going out to the hospital hallway, was a huge no-no. I would much have rather had her be knocked out cold in surgery for this whole film than have her be awake and alert and not let her do anything in this film. They basically had to create these new characters because – they basically, you have Allison who is going out to try to do things. And then you have Karen who's kind of trying to juggle, you know, keeping Lori in the hospital room and trying to find Allison. But the problem is, is you don't give a crap about any of these new characters. They, 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 like I said, you have Anthony Michael Hall's Tommy character. You've got these other um, previous survivors or beast or people who were affected by Michael in the first film. You've got the town of Haddonfield, which we're definitely going to touch on the town of Haddonfield. Uh, and then you've got um, this this gay couple, Little John and Big John, played by um, Norm McDonald or not Norm McDonald, sorry, Michael McDonald from Mad TV, and uh, Scott MacArthur, which many people know him from from the Mick, uh, who are living in the Myers household now. I'm sorry, They're, these characters are all given way, way, way too much screen time. It, they don't matter. They really don't. They're fodder for Michael to eventually kill by the end of the film. Spoiler, but it's a Halloween film. You guys know what's going to happen. But the problem is, is that they're trying to get you to care about these characters, but you know what's going to happen. So the events of what's happening with these characters and the and the stories they're trying to develop with these characters don't matter. And you as a fan know they don't matter. So to waste so much time with these characters and not on the five characters that you do care about, which would be the three Strode women – uh, Hawkins and Michael uh, is is redundantly stupid. Anthony Michael Hall's Tommy is a horrifically bad written character. He's basically a character who is like, I want revenge. I want to kill Michael and blah blah blah. Like first off, you were a little kid when when Michael was around, but now he's so like gung ho, like I'm gonna kill him. It's mine. Evil dies tonight and all this kind of bull crap. Anthony Michael Hall does a horrible job portraying this character and tommy is basically an idiot through this entire film um the the best part of this movie is the firefighter scene where michael gets out of the house of, of laurie's house of fire and takes on the firefighters which newsflash is completely given away in the trailer that is the best part of this film it is the most um action well i want to say action heavy it is the coolest scene seeing michael come out of the fiery house and taking on a bunch of firefighters who literally for the most part, are ready to fight Michael. Um, it's a really awesomely shot scene. Problem is that the rest of the film after that is just bad. It's just really, really bad. Michael's kills in this are way, way more brutal than they were in any film previously, especially the last one, but almost unnecessarily brutal to the point where it was, it's just, like there's one point where he kills this one guy and then proceeds to stab him with every knife in a kitchen and it was just they, they made Michael so much more over the top with his kills that it just felt unnecessary. But also to the point that he was staging the bodies this time around. Like There's one point where he kills some people in a playground and he leaves the area. But then when the people come to the area where one survivor is left, all of a sudden the bodies are all staged. Which I'm like, did Michael leave, then come back, put these bodies up? And then leave again. It just it, it's it's the, that's the way the whole story is. It's all disjointed. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But his kills are just they're I mean they're brutal. Like if you want brutal kills, you're gonna get that with Halloween kills. And that is probably one of the positives of this film is just how brutal the kills are. But some of them are just so over the top. They're just like, damn, like this is not the Michael Myers that we've known from the old franchise. Like this one is super over the top cutthroat, which is good in certain situations, but in other situations, it's like, well, that just seemed unnecessary. <laughs> but the the one of the big things that I was really excited about when I saw the trailer 
for this film is that it shows that the town of Haddonfield is going to have like an uprising, that they're all going to come together to take down Michael. They're all going to work together to to hunt Michael down and kill him, which in theory, in on paper or in the trailer, that looked like a very intriguing storyline. Like, oh, that's actually going to be really cool, really fun. It ends up being one of the most idiotic parts of this film. First off, the whole town of Haddonfield is a bunch of morons who deserve to die. They're all so idiotically stupid, and they make every stupid decision you make in a horror film. Literally anything in a horror film that you know is a bad idea, everyone in this film does. To over-the-top, eye-rolling, nauseating levels of stupidity in this film. Even when they get a chance to take Michael out, they do it in the worst way, where you are screaming at the TV, do this! And none of them do it. So when they die, it's like, well, you kind of fucking deserve to die because you're that stupid. There's literally one point in the film where they chase around a older, shorter man who's hunched over. The whole town is like in the hospital and they're chasing this old hunched over like five foot four man around the ha- around the hospital thinking it's Michael. <sighs> and there are people in this group that have seen Michael before. You know, Michael Myers, the guy who's over six feet tall, lumbering, stands straight up, wears a mask. But no, let's chase a guy who's barely 5'5", five five, who's hunched over and super old. Yeah, that's Michael Myers. It's it's It made my head hurt how stupid these characters are in this film. And poor Jamie Lee Curtis is stuck in a hospital bed with um, Will Patton. Who also, like I said, they're injured. They they basically are having to basically play this entire film in a hospital room, just talking because they can't go out and do anything because they're too hurt. It's the the problem with this film is that we know we're getting a third film. They even even before the end the end events of the first film, we knew we were going to get a trilogy. So this middle film, this is the whole problem with the movie in in, in general, is they know they got to get to the third film. They know you know that Michael has to survive because there's a third movie coming out next year. And that's the problem is that this movie wrote itself into a corner and it completely go has to go a almost a supernatural route of an epic screw you proportions um, just to make this film last to a third movie. The final five minutes makes completely no sense whatsoever based off of the events of a the very 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 first film from the 70s or the 2018 film they go so they they go so much in a direction in these last 5 minutes that makes you go okay what and a, a certain situation happens i'm not going to say what it is cuz it's a huge spoiler that is so over the top bullshit that I almost didn't think that it was actually happening. I thought it was like a mental thing. Like, oh, they're envisioning this. But no, it's legit happening. A, there's no way in hell it could happen because there's too many people around. And that's all I'm going to say without going too, without going spoilery. But it's 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 such a – I felt like this was, the last five minutes of the movie was such an F you to everyone watching and, and fans of the franchise. Like I know the old Halloween films had supernatural elements and, and stuff like that and the reason why Michael was so powerful – we do not get that in the 70s, in the original 70s film. We don't get that in 2018's film. And up until this point, we don't get it in this movie. But then the, the last five minutes, they completely do this thing. And it's unexplained. But it seems like Jamie Lee Curtis seems to know, which it, it, like I said, it's, it's, it's frustrating. And that's the problem with this film. They there's it feel like they're just spinning their wheels because they know they have to get to a third film. Michael can't die. Jamie Lee Curtis can't die because they have to get to that third film next year. So they don't do anything in this film to establish any of the characters that matter. Uh, all they did was basically create an hour and 45 minute film of Michael killing a ton of people in the town and pretty much leave us in the same spot that we were left in at the end of the 2018 film outside of one big thing, which is spoilery that I'm not going to say by the, by the end of this film, we are nowhere different than when we were at the end of the first film in 2018 to the point where this film just doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Like I kind of hope and wish, and I know I won't be able to do this. I can forget this film existed 
and go see the third film next year because I feel like that is going to be a, a true connective tissue story to the 2018 film. And this one is just a weird fever dream that just makes literally no sense. Um, obviously, if you're a fan of the of the 2018 Halloween or you're a fan of the Halloween franchise in general, you're, you're going to check this out, whether it be in theaters or whether it be on Peacock. Um, I can't recommend this. It's horribly bad. It is really, really bad. Yes, the kills are really awesome. They're brutal, um, which that can be fun to watch for some people. But the story itself, the characters that they created for this film in general are really, really bad. The story's bad. The scenes in this film are bad. Um, there's not really anything I can say about this outside of the brutality of the kills that I can really like about this movie. Jamie Lee Curtis is completely saddled to a hospital room. There's just nothing to like about this film. This is a huge epic disappointment for me uh, in terms of the Halloween franchise and just in terms of, of a Halloween film in general when you have such a big character name of Michael Myers. This was a complete miss for me. Uh, going to my overall score, because of the brutality of the kills and because they were fun to watch, and Michael is good in the film. I'm not going to knock Michael, and Jimmy Lee Curtis is not bad in the film, but she just, like I said, she's stuck in a hospital room the entire time. I'm going to give this a 43%. Like I said, I don't recommend checking this out. If I could pretend this one didn't happen and wait till I think it's Halloween ends is what they're calling the third film. Um, obviously, I'm going to check it out because I got to see how this finishes. But this second film is a complete miss for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like, share, subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on the movie Crusaders. Of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Uh, coming up next, uh, Last Duel came out this weekend as well. I'll try my best to get out there to uh, see that and have a review for you guys. If I don't, there will, there will eventually be one. It just might not be this weekend. And also, uh, myself and Brian Michaels released this week's episode of The Weekend Crusaders. So feel free to check that out where we talk about five movies that came out this week in movie history. Uh, Brian and I will be back next week for another episode of The Weekend Crusaders. And then next week, we also have Dune. Um, so def there'll definitely be a review for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Halloween kills huge miss. Um, if you guys have to see it, watch it on Peacock. Don't waste the money to see it in theaters. Cause this is not going to be something that you're going to be happy with after an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, also no post credit scenes, no end credit scenes. When the movie's over, the movie's over. There's no con connective tissue taking you to the third film. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, last duel is better. And if not, we'll see you next week on the weekend crusaders. Uh, so until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, movie crusaders. You're still here. It's over. Go home. <laughs>